Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to take a look at glycogenesis. Now, the word glycogenesis has the prefix glyco, which means glycogen, and the suffix genesis, which means the beginning of. So it's the beginning of glycogen. What is glycogen? It's the stored form of glucose. And what is glucose? Well, it's that monosaccharide, that simple sugar that we use to create ATP. And we know from previous videos that one molecule of uh, glucose can produce around about 34 to 36 ATP molecules. So it's a really efficient way of creating energy. Now, we know that we can take glucose and we can absorb it into the body and it can go into a number of different cell types to use to make energy. But in what situations do we want to take glucose and store it in the form of glycogen? Well, these are going to be fed states. So just after eating, also known as the absorptive state, zero to four hours, we're going to be taking the glucose we've just ingested and we're going to store it as this glycogen. All right. So we've got glucose. You can see that there's six carbon, 12 hydrogen, six oxygen, and I'm going to simplify this ring shaped structure of glucose into this structure. And you can also see that I've labeled the six carbons. That's where the first carbon is, second, third, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, and sixth carbon. This is gonna be important because when we create glycogen, all we do is snap together glucose. We have to change it a little bit, but basically we're snapping them together to create this molecule that we can compactly store within the liver or the muscle or the kidney. So. Here's glucose. First step is we need to turn this glucose into something called glucose 6-phosphate. And you're probably aware that glucose 6-phosphate is the first step in the glycolytic pathway. It's also the first step in creating glycogen. How do we do it? We take some ATP, give that glucose one of those phosphates. We now have ADP, diphosphate, adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate, and we snap that ATP here. Now, which carbon is that? one, two, three, four, five, six. It's on the sixth carbon, so it's called glucose 6-phosphate. Perfect. Now what we need to do is take that phosphate and put it in another position. We do this with another enzyme called phosphoglucomutase. Take it off the sixth position, put it on the first position. So there's the first position. Now we've got the phosphate there. Now the next step is different. What we get is something called uridine triphosphate. Now, this uridine is telling you that there's a nucleotide. What's a nucleotide? Remember, nucleotides are really important components of DNA. And we've got nucleotides, they can turn into amino acids and proteins. We've got the nucleotide uracil here, and we've got uridine triphosphate. So there's three phosphates as well. We take the uridine and one phosphate, pop them off, connect it to that phosphate. So now we've got two phosphates and the uridine, so it's uridine diphosphate attached to the first carbon. There's the uridine diphosphate. And what we're simply left, if we take that off, is two phosphates, okay? So the uridine triphosphate just turns into diphosphates, okay? And now we've got this uridine diphosphate attached to the first carbon of the glucose. We can now snap these together to create glycogen. And what we do is we take an enzyme called glycogen synthase, makes sense, snaps things together. We take a glycogen, uh, a glucose molecule, and we pull off the UDP, and it facilitates the linking together at which carbons? At the fourth carbon and the first carbon. Fourth carbon, first carbon, fourth carbon, first carbon, and we put this process on repeat. Now you can see that at some points you have different branching, and you can see that the sixth carbon can also bind to the first carbon. And then here we've got fourth and first. So what type of binding do we have? We've got one to four binding and we've got one to six binding. And what we end up getting over time, over this period, is this very branched molecule that we call glycogen. Now here's an important point. When we store glucose in the form of glycogen, this is how animals store glucose. So animals store glucose in the form of glycogen. Plants store glucose in the form of starch and cellulose. And they are really, really similar to this structure. In actual fact, what you'll find is that starch is nearly identical, it's just not as branched. So it's the same bonds. What you're gonna find with cellulose is it's the same one to four bonds. However, what you're gonna find is that nearly every second glucose is flipped upside down. So what that means is, this is down here, and this bond like this 
is up like that for every second one. Now this is important because the enzyme that we use when we are now in a fasting state, a post-absorptive state, and we need to break this glycogen down back into glucose to use for energy, we need to chop these one to four bonds and one to six bonds. And we use an enzyme called amylase to do this, right? So when we have glycogen or starch, we can easily chop it up with this amylase. But if we're ingesting cellulose, certain plant material, we don't actually have the enzymes to break these every second bonds where it's flipped upside down. And this is the reason why we can't break down grass, for example, in the form of cellulose, but cows can. They do have the enzyme that can chop this up. So what we now have is an indigestible carbohydrate because glycogen is a carbohydrate, just a complex sugar molecule, and that ends up becoming fiber. So this is the quick process of glycogenesis.